Race car spelled backwards is still race car. This is the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie. Hello. <laughs> Coming off a hot weekend at, I don't know what to even call this place, WWT is kind of what I've went with. In Worldwide Technology Quarter. Worldwide Technology Raceway. A oh, raceway. <laughs> What'd you call it? A quarter? Well, you know, like, you know, the French Quarter oh. in, uh, <laughs> down there in New Orleans, New Orleans. So as of the time of recording this, the Jeff Gluck poll has it at 83%. Yes, it was a good race. 17, no, it was a good, not a good race. What do you think? Good race, bad race? I voted it was a good race, but in reality, I would give it, if it was like on a 1 to 10 scale, a 7.5 or 75%. Yeah, I was, I was in there at the, I would probably say 7 a strong seven, you know, weak six point four five, but I mean, there were moments. I go with seven. I mean, it there was racing. It did look difficult to pass, but you got to remember, we went into this race weekend expecting crap. Exactly, I mean, a big turd on a plate. You had Richmond, Martinsville, Phoenix were the three tracks this one was compared to, and in my opinion, all three of those races sucked. So. So if it wasn't for the lower expectations, I might give it a six. That, that's what I was thinking, because originally when we made these remarks to each other about 20 minutes ago, I was almost at an eight. But when I really broke it down, it if it wouldn't have been for little things, I wouldn't have even given it what I did. So not having any expectations, I think, really helped out on, which I guess it probably helped our viewing experience as well. And I will, and we'll talk about it later. But man, there were some people that made it really, really entertaining. No, <laughs> I mean, I was laughing for like an hour. Your new best friend. <laughs> My new best friend. <laughs> so before we jump into talking about the race this weekend, did you listen to the Dell Junior download yet? I did. Yeah. What did you think? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! I originally was not going to listen because I hate when they do the two part because then he always cuts off when it's quit, getting really good. And he did, but still, I went ahead and listened. And if you haven't listened, I'm sorry, it's, it is about Jeremy Mayfield who was suspended for violating NASCAR's substance abuse policy. And, you know, he, just, he talks about all the, in my opinion, it's like a conspiracy. What was your take on Jeremy, though? I wasn't feeling like he was 100% honest either. No, but I don't feel like he's a crackhead. I mean, not that I know a lot of well, crackheads, I'm not but the sure dude about, doesn't sound shot out. I'm not sure about the meth and the, you know, obviously, after hearing that, there were some questionable, uh, what do you want to call it, evidence touching before yeah, Do- he Dr. got Dr. Black who sounds yeah. like a shady character. He does. He seems kind of wonky. And then you've got Brian France activity, dude. What the yeah. hell? Yeah, in 2017, let's not forget, Brian France was arrested for DUI and possession of oxycodone. And so, his it, wife testified for Mayfield about her ex-husband being a wackadoodle. So... <laughs> I mean, I know there's quite a time frame jump between the two happening, but... What a drama. Brian France gets this new policy and this drug policy, because apparently at the time in other sports, drugs were a big thing. So NASCAR didn't have a drug problem. They just reacted to the NFL and Major League Baseball, assumingly. Well, I once worked for a dude who was snorting cocaine in front of about 15 employees and told us that they were going to institute drug testing. <laughs> and I, of course, said, so obviously management is exempt. <laughs> well, it's a true. That was that true or false question. <laughs> Ten well, questions, <laughs> true or false. <laughs> so, you know, they did institute the drug testing there. and Well, it's almost, in a sense, one could even... All these are just thoughts. I mean, I... I don't really have an opinion either way. I didn't at the time have an opinion at all. I really just, I honestly forgot about this happening. 
until this episode. Yeah. But I'd look back at it, and I don't remember having an opinion at the time. But after listening to this show, the half of it I've heard, it's almost like Brian France was like, look at what's going on with Jeremy. Yeah. And don't pay attention. Doing the to old what, Houdini What act. I'm over here doing. Watch what's happening over here, but don't look at what I'm doing under the table. You got Brian France pulling the old Hunter Biden act up in the hotel room and pointing all the blame at Mayfield over there so nobody notices. And, you know, <laughs> I like you said, I had completely forgotten about Mayfield. But when I heard he was coming, my first thought was, oh, yeah, he had the cojones to uh, punt Dale Sr. That's right. That think, was my first thought. And then when they started talking about the other stuff, then I was like, oh, yeah. yeah I forgot all about it. They raided his house and all. Okay, got stolen property. Whoa. So, what's crazy when I think of the drug violations or the drug policy within NASCAR, I automatically go to, who was it, Kurt Busch? Or no, it wasn't Busch. It was like Almendinger or something. One of it the was Almendinger. With the Adderall. Yeah. It was one of the Penske boys. It was it was Almendinger. I automatically go to that instance. He had to do the Road to Tomorrow or whatever it's called. Yeah. Getting road ready. to Recovery. Yeah, getting ready for Which, tomorrow. as Jeremy Mayfield said, they didn't have... The road to recovery was you admit you did everything wrong and we'll let you in. Yeah. You do what we say we want you to do. And, you know, what he said is I didn't do anything wrong, so I wasn't going to admit to it. Uh, honestly, I love I loved the conspiracy aspect of life. It's just entertaining to me. And there's conspiracies all in NASCAR. I mean, oh, they threw that yellow because Dale Jr. is about to go a lap down. I, I, or they threw that yellow because they like – Tony Stewart better than Carl Edwards for a championship. Yeah. So, but those are better storylines. Let's throw a caution. Or let's throw the caution because Ryan Blaney is about to win the All Star race uncontested. Yeah. And there's a car not wrecking down the back straightaway. Or let's call, throw the <laughs> caution because Ross Chastain is going to wreck the whole field. And that could happen. Any week. It almost actually. did this week. <laughs> he started. I think he's going to break it up into the next few races. <laughs> oh, he's. So, Rick Hendrick also announced that he will be fielding the number 17 car in three upcoming Xfinity races. Larson's going to drive it at Road America. Bowman's going to drive it at the Indy Road Course. And William Byron will be driving it at Watkins Glen. Jamie, you sent me a text saying that this is a sign, or could this be a sign that Dell Jr. is moving to the Cup Series? Well, I the, have my own theory, but... There's rules. The rule is, Rick Hendrick can't own two teams in the Cup Series. He can collaborate like he already does with other teams, but he can't own them. Now, he is a minority owner of Junior Motorsports. Correct. Well... If a move's going to be made, he, they got to have a breakup, right? He can't own any of Junior Motorsports. And if he can't own any of Junior Motorsports, he needs his own Xfinity team to nurture young drivers to bring up the cup, which he's been doing with Junior Motorsports. Or, my theory is, there's six road course races a year, so... Because the 88 car is already fielding Hendrick drivers this season, hence the reason Chase Elliott's name's not on this list. They see the importance of road racing, so instead of Junior trying to get another car, Rick's just going to field one and run it out of the Junior Motorsports shop even. But Junior <laughs> has said over and over again, of course it's expensive, but at some point that would be the next progression. And I don't. I don't think we won't see Junior in the Cup Series. I think it is. I think he can bring possible. so many partnerships for sponsorship. Hellman's might jump back in. Would Wrangler jump in full time? Why not? Well, I mean, you're seeing you're seeing a lot of youth in the ownership side of it, and I'm not just talking Justin Marks and those guys. I'm talking Jeff Gordon. You're seeing Jeff, he stepped out of the booth, and now you're seeing him all the time at the track representing Hendrick Motorsports. He's stepping into a bigger role because Rick 
Roger. So Roush, those guys are getting older. You guys aren't we going to have a conflict guys. when Junior gets the cup? I mean, first of all, you are a big fan of Junior, right? He's more your age. I was one of those that was a big fan of his dad and flipped to him when his dad died. But because I like Junior, it wasn't an automatic. Junior had to earn my adulation. That was a good <laughs> word, wasn't it? But he earned it. Also, who's the richest NASCAR driver ever? Current and retired. Dale Jr. Yeah, worth an estimated 300 to $500 million. He's got the pockets. He can bring the sponsorship. His team dominates Xfinity with anything that's competitive. Don't you want to go to what is more competitive to test your metal? I, I agree. <laughs> what was that, dude? I, <laughs> I agree. I, I mean, <laughs> I could repeat all that, but I do agree with you. I really think we're going to – I don't think that the 17 car is any indication of Junior going to – Cup. It's no more indication than Junior's already well, said. Let me pull in another possibility here to expand. <laughs> what? I'm, but Junior's already said he wants to go. The conspiracy here. All right. His best friend at Joe Gibbs Racing is saying, "Oh, in two weeks, I'll let you guys know if my heart's still in racing." So you got. Ty Gibbs breathing three down his back. Ty Gibbs is going to be driving for his grandfather. It's a matter of when. There's no doubt. And they need a car opening. Well, we can't afford Kyle. Truex, for whatever reason, and I've read plenty of articles that said Bass Pro Shop is with Truex. Yeah, but if Truex leaves... And retires, Bass Pro Shop's not going to leave. And then he says, oh, I'm going to drive the Lunar schedule for my best friend, Dale Jr. Just a limited schedule. I don't like that. In the Hellman's Bass Pro Shop car. I think, <laughs> I think you're seeing Dale Jr.'s cup driver driving for Colleague Racing right now with Noah Gregson. If Junior goes cup racing, Possibility. why not take Noah Gregson? Yeah. Noah Gregson's a stud when it comes to these tracks. He's got four studs driving for him. <laughs> no in doubt. Xfinity. I no mean, doubt. On so, any track. You saw it this weekend in Portland. And look you at the it. other studs that have hey, driven for him. You see it every him. weekend. Martin what? Truex drove for him. Brad Keselowski <laughs> drove Correct. for him. Correct. Reagan Smith. I don't know if he was a big stud. I like the guy. He was good in that number He drives seven. better than I do. He drove the heck out of that seven. Justin Allgaier is the seven to me, though. Yeah. Allgaier owns that seven. But he's, he can promote Allgaier if he's got a cup team. Well, Just in the realm of make-believe, does he buy, if he decides to go cup racing, just one charter or two? Just one first season. You think? Yep. Kind of like 2311? Yeah. Dale Jr. is too conservative to buy more than one. So, he's going to be a Rick Hendricks teammate. Don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Uh huh. He'll definitely be an al in alliance with uh -huh. Hendrick. He'll basically be the fifth Hendrick car. So, all the pieces we've already talked about in the conspiracy are all of a sudden magically coming together. I don't know if you throw Truex into that conspiracy, but Truex has said that he'll let us know in the next few weeks if he's going to return. He told Bob Pockress that, and he told Bob that his decision is based on if he's still having fun racing and his quality of life, his happiness level. All right. But it has to, nothing to do with Ty Gibbs is what he said. But I have some more conspiracy. He need, Ty Gibbs needs a ride next year. He does. So where is that going? Well, I don't think they're going to sign Kyle Bush either. I don't think. I think Kyle. Oh, wow. So you're saying Kyle. Oh, and. he and Junior have some problems. They could work out. But I think Junior <laughs> could bring the sponsorship needed to pay for Kyle Bush. 
Wow. And Kyle Busch used to drive for Hendrick. Wouldn't that be the number five car? So you're saying Kyle Busch be the first JRM and Martin comes Cup out car? of retirement to drive part time. For I think Martin team wa- two. I think I think Martin walks away. I think Martin. What if he comes and works for Junior as uh, vice president of competition? I think Martin walks away. I think he just. I think he not Carl Edwards completely it, but I think he disappears. I think he goes and he likes the woods. I think him and his wife go live their life. Gets out of the spotlight. I don't think Martin. He doesn't seem like a fame seeker to me. So no, that he's the complete opposite. But I don't, I don't see him just his brother still races. I don't see him just throwing it in. I don't know. I think he has a lot to give. And his demeanor is like a teacher. I know I rag on him sometimes, but he doesn't seem to get upset. I don't know. All the pieces seem to be falling in place for all this to happen. All right. Another question for you, Jamie. Now, after Joey Logano wins at Worldwide Technology Raceway. We now have four two-time winners this far in the season. You got William Byron, who's won at Atlanta and Martinsville, Ross Chastain, Coda and Talladega, Denny Hamlin, Richmond and Charlotte, and Logano, Darlington, and Worldwide Technology Raceway. Out of these four drivers, if any, who makes the final four? I know we kind of text back and forth on this. Yeah. I think you're looking at our final four. I'm going to say all four of them. You know, it's funny because I, when, I, when I wrote this down, like Thursday, in my notes, I left a line under it in case we got another two-time winner so I could add it to my notes. What I say when we first discuss it, three of the four will be in or two? Well, yeah, two of the – you said two of the three – I wasn't, and I told you I would have a better idea. Denny Hamlin had a strong car. Denny Hamlin hit the wall hard because Chastain put him in the wall. So I think Denny is running decent now, and he's saying the car sucks. I think he's When that car gets good, I think Denny could win the championship. That's what I'm going to say, too. I think we're looking at the champion. Ross Chastain will calm the hell down. He, he can make it in the Final Four, but he can't piss everybody else off. And that's where he's going to get stuck. He might make it to the Final Four. He might get wrecked before the Final Four. He's pissed everyone off. Joey Logano, you never know. I mean, he just he's like, he'll just hop in there and ruin your day in a heartbeat. And let's not forget, he pissed off Almadinger, who runs a limited scheduling cup. Almadinger ain't going to go to the championship. No. He's not qualified. Because he's running a part-time schedule. Amendinger's going to get revenge. Amendinger, we keep forgetting. He's been in racing since what? The late 90s? He's no youngster. No, but I like him. He's, I he, like him too. He's one of my favorites, man. I, I, watching him win over the weekend was pretty cool. I mean, I really do like him. So, I got another question for you. All right. I got another answer for you. Maybe. I'm, I was at 50-50 over the weekend. Now I'm about 70% sure that Kyle Busch is going to leave Joe Gibbs Racing. Okay. What team can take him? Man, I know I've I... already said Junior Motorsports could. I think just by ha- opening a cup team. Stuart Haas, I think, is the only one that can afford him. And Stewart got knows him. But he also knows him. They race together. They were teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing. Yeah, but I mean... I mean, they're both hotheads. Who can control a hothead? A hothead. It could or it couldn't work. But it very well could. That's the thing, so... But I think those are the only two options unless Kyle goes and buys a charter himself. Well... And then would he be a that Toyota affiliate? I don't affiliate? see Kyle doing that because then he's going to have to build the team up. And he's not going to go somewhere subpar to, to build it. He's... But what Kyle's if he, like Denny. But what if he got a partnership with Joe Gibbs Racing? I don't think I think that's already passed. What's Joe Gibb going to just field like 30 Toyotas and they're all affiliates of his? They're former drivers and celebrities. That's why I fall back on Stuart Haas because Ford's weak. Who's, who's Kyle Busch going to – what celebrity is going to partner with Kyle Busch? The Kardashians? Yeah, but think about this. Ford has hardly any trucks in the truck series. 
what if they got Kyle to come over to Stuart Haas? Oh well, yeah. And now he's got now you've got a truck Ford series. trucks. There's more Fords in the truck series now. Yeah, but if they're not to think, oh, Ford gonna... could pony up some cash. Oh, no doubt. I agree with that. And help Tony Stewart. Yeah, I think it's possible. And Haas has proven he can pony up some cash and sponsor a car with his Haas CNC. He did it for his brother Kurt. He said he wanted Kurt. I don't even think Tony Stewart agreed, but he said, well, I got a sponsor, me. Yeah. So screw you. So we, we know they got the money to do it. That's what I'm saying. I think financially they're the only they're the only ones without a sponsor signed that could go get Kyle. But I think it would be easy enough to get enough sponsorship to afford Kyle for any team if they were willing wow. to give him what he wants. I think Trackhouse could afford him. Isn't it weird, though, that Mars, who's been in racing for like 30-odd years, has broken up that relationship? You'd think it, well, Do you think maybe he's not that he's, good with sponsors? Well, duh. <laughs> well. I don't know, but. So it would take Stuart Haas or JR Motorsports. Or Trackhouse, I think. Do you think Trackhouse has the money? I think Trackhouse can acquire the sponsorship to have that much. That's what I'm saying. I think that Kyle Busch brings sponsorship. Even I Who's mean, he going to bring? I'm just saying. Anybody. He's, he, his name think, attracts sponsors. Who do you think he could drag with him? Let his me, brother kind of no, took. Think of it this way. Look at it this way. His who brother do you took think, Monster from him, and then he started think, Rowdy. Who do you think it's easier for me to walk into a business and sell? Kyle Busch or Ross Chastain? The very casual NASCAR fan, non-NASCAR fan, business owner. This is a guy who doesn't watch NASCAR, but he owns a business. He probably knows Kyle Busch. He might know Ross Chastain, but I doubt it. But what Let's just kind be of friendly banter? It doesn't matter. Is Kyle it, Busch going to bring to that sponsor at the sponsorship tents and the suites that they're renting? We don't know how Kyle does in those situations because we've never seen it. If I could spend a day with Kyle. If Kyle Busch absolutely Saturday, sucked, Sunday morning. If he absolutely sucked with sponsors, do you think they would keep coming back to him? Winners are going to, you know, track flies with honey. I mean. I mean, he's a great driver. That's what I'm saying. Even if he is an ass to his sponsors, it doesn't matter. You can now say you sponsor Kyle Busch. Uh -huh. That sounds a lot better than I sponsor BJ McLeod. And here's another rabbit hole for you. I'm on Cody Ware's car. Who? I'm on Kyle Busch's car. Oh, we know that. Do you think Kyle, who has spent most of his career with Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendricks, and before that, wasn't it Penske? How in the world do we go down this rabbit hole? <laughs> Kurt can outdrive his car. He can improve his car by 10 spots. His brother can. We know that. We've seen it done over and over again. Kurt can drive a tight race car. He can drive a tank to top 10. Kurt can drive a tight, ra a tight race car better than Kyle can drive a tight race car. Kyle can drive a loose race car better than Kurt can drive a loose race car. But can Kyle go to a mediocre team and at least win once a year? No, because his, person, his attitude is going to get in his way. That's just my, my thinking. Kyle's going to be like... I think you're right. How many times have we heard Kyle get out of the car and go, well, Kyle, how did you win that one today? And he looks at the, right in the mic and goes, talent. The car sucked. I mean, I've heard him say it about his truck, the Xfinity car, cup car. We've heard him win races, get out and go, this track sucked, this car sucked. The only reason I won this race is because I'm that damn good. Do you think Braxton... Watches his dad post race. Oh, you think Braxton, he gets out. He's a little his, punk, man. Have you not seen his him? His dad says to him, "What's wrong? Why did you lose?" And he's gonna like, "Daddy, the car sucked." <laughs> he does. He gets all mad. And Kyle's like, "Well, it doesn't. You know, that's just how it is. It's all Daddy can afford." All right, let's move on to the race weekend, man. I don't even think we've talked about this weekend that much. But let's start with the truck race. Did you see it? Before we even talk about this green, white, checkered, and Corey Heim winning the race, let's talk about Hosovar. And let's talk about the piss poor response from the emergency team. <laughs> Last weekend, it takes five, six minutes to flip a car over. When Busher gets out, his head's red, and now he has COVID. 
I mean, poor guy's been through it all. I'm not saying he got Maybe he got it because he was upside down and it came through. That, <laughs> that lowered his immune. <laughs> that water, wastewater, whatever. So, it, anyway, I think that car could have been flipped over in half the time and he could have been safely removed from the car without any extra injuries in half the amount of time. Then we have Harsavo screaming in pain, you uh-huh. know, come help, help me, me. Help, help me. me. You know, effing help me over here. I'm hurting. You know, he's screaming for help, and you got these poor little, these poor security or safety workers. Well, they were some of them were EMS, <laughs> but you know what? They, they weren't moving very I'm fast. I'm going to piss off some people here. Oh, here we go. Don't you think there should be a weight limit for the emergency personnel? I think there should be a physical test that is required. You should have to be able to compete a physical exam. Okay, like, so like the NASCAR running, official in his white NASCAR official jumpsuit. You should have to run up and down the track his head X in amount there. of times in X amount of seconds. And I don't know where the video came from with the audio, but oh, you know, help. he's like, are you okay? Help me. Are you okay? Help me. And then he goes, effing help me. Somebody else. And then the guy stands up, and I think we're in real time, but it looks like he's waving <laughs> in slow motion. That Uber Eats is for me. Bring it over <laughs> here. Bring it. Uh, please bring my hamburger over here. Oh, that guy who needs help. Help him, too. But then the other EMSs were a little chunky, too. So, so I've seen on social media they're saying because he he let his window net down. That's saying you're okay. I thought that was saying you're alive. That's what I thought too. So, I, thought, I am conscious. Yes, I am conscious enough to pull this tab. I am li- I am alive and breathing. It doesn't mean I'm okay. I'm screaming for help. Don't they have a director of the race that sits in their own insulated room watching videos? Well, I, did you hear the hit? I mean, the sound of the cars car hitting him it hit him driver's side and it was in between the door and the front tire yeah i mean it was driver's side and my guess Hard. is that's the foot that was yeah. effed up and now we still don't know he's got to go see a specialist before <laughs> well, that's never good oh yeah, we yeah. Know, it's bad that's what we know it's, it's broke or worse when your doctor referrals you gives you a referral to another physician it means it's beyond his capability yeah. that means the hospital couldn't help it oh you're you're effed up but yeah, that's, that's race control. That's somewhere. That's a problem with NASCAR. Like I said, in my opinion, that's two weeks in a row. The safety response has just been horrible. I'm not. But cool as with that. we said, they're we're say, slow. We're claiming to be. That's what I mean. Like they're just practice it. Like the are they crew simi- does. Are they practicing on a sim rig like PlayStation? That's what it is. With bad internet, so it's real <laughs> slow. Yeah. Where are we? Oh, my hamburger. I forgot my hamburger in the truck. We can get four tires and a full tank of gas in 12 seconds, but we can't flip a car back over in under five minutes. I guarantee I you. It took longer than 12 seconds I to gu- check on Hosovar. I guarantee you Chris Busher's team could have flipped that car over by hand faster than NASCAR flipped it over. Six minutes. That's what I've heard many people say. Now, as I told you yesterday, I have this small convertible. I had to take the top off. Fix the key cylinder because there's a stop in it that got broke. So I am upside down (laughs) on my back with the top down, my feet sticking out of the car, head and arm under the clutch, brake, and gas pedal. And only, I can only fit my head and one arm under there. And it went, you went. All I went numb, all, all the blood. The blood. Yeah. yeah, I had to, had. you know, if I couldn't get it after about three or four minutes, I had to roll, of course I had the door open, roll out of the car, clunk my head on the pavement, sit up straight, and wait 10 minutes before I attempted it again. It's like eating. What the I'm hell, swimming. dude? Don't they understand that upside down is not good? Or that... I just think there should be... When your foot is doing a 90 degree angle. Somebody, Bad news. somebody in race control should have came over the speaker. Or I mean, not made that their headset. I know they're communicating. Race control should have said, "NASCAR official in truck two two three, check on 
Number of whatever, Harsavo is, what's 42, 45? Yeah, 42, and he yeah. had a hole in the truck. Yeah. He's got a hole in the truck. It, Check on him. We saw the wreck happen in yeah. real time. He got hit hard. Twice. Check on him. Yeah. Don't run over to the guy who just spun around once and is just sitting there because he can't remember how to start his car. Maybe he had the bag of crystals. <laughs> <laughs> he had the ice cream on it. Yeah. He had a food sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> if you want NASCAR to get to you fast in an emergency <laughs> situation, have a, bag of crystals. have a food sponsor <laughs> yeah. on your car. Throw, throw a Big Mac on the quarter panel. <laughs> That's why, you know, I don't think. That's why they're. I don't think Bubba's got anything to worry about. Bubba Wallace (laughs) starts spinning out in that McDonald's car. The safety personnel pulls out on the track. Like, ooh, Happy Meals. Oh, it's not even yellow. (laughs) They pull out before the yellow comes out. Can I get some cookies? Well, speaking of race control, let's talk about these idiots that ran race control for that Xfinity race. First off, I don't like the rain race. It took way too long. And to be honest, I got bored from all the cautions. Yeah, well, it, it was too many. That's what I mean. And then it takes too long in between cautions. So during stage one, I think it was nine laps to go. You see the guys coming to take the green flag, and only like the first five or six rows are bunched up, and then behind that, it's like a free for all. I mean, there's just there's cars that aren't even in the picture caught up yet. Like I'm not sure why NASCAR threw that green flag. They, they, clearly. You can tell the guys aren't ready. I mean, I hate that make make it any longer than it already is, but it's just it just looks stupid. It does. It it just looks unprofessional. I mean, these guys are supposed to be the next up, you know, the next rising stars. They're your middle cl- your middle guys. You got your trucks, Xfinity Cup. They're they're the next guys in line to be cup drivers. We can only get six rows lined up. In what, three laps? But we must consider that Jesse Awuji was in that line. And no one knows what he's doing there. Is he just there for shits and giggles? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesse Awuji never fails to make TV. It's like put him in a truck, put him in the Xfinity series. The one I feel bad for is Emmett Smith. Like, how did he get suckered into this deal thinking it's a good idea? Because you got. Jesse Awuji's probably a super nice guy, but he's three laps down and wrecks the friggin' leader under caution. How's that even right? Like, what kind of idiot does that? He doesn't pay attention at the pre-race meeting. He he's not even it. at the pre-race. He's not even in the truck mentally. I don't know where he's at mentally, but it's not in that truck because... How do you get a license is what I Three laps out. down and you spin the leader out. Like... He said, somebody said he was trying to pass the leader. What, do you think it was under race conditions and they were racing on the last lap on the last do turn so he's going to wreck him? test for color blindness? Maybe he doesn't know what color yellow is. They're all the same color to him. As we discussed, we know they have a drug testing policy, so we know it's not that. But Maybe Dr. Black look. <laughs> administered it. Look, man. And then handed it around at the Charlotte Hornets game. I responded to a tweet that Freddie Kraft made, you know, a long time ago, like two years ago, 2020, saying he's sure Jesse Luigi, however you say it is. Let's just call him the Ouija board. We'll just say Jesse. We'll say Jesse. He says he's sure Jesse's a nice guy and all. And I agree. Yeah, he is probably a nice guy, but he's not a good driver. We might like him if we met him. Two years later, we're still at the point of it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. This is what we're calling our premier series. The top three premier series, and we have people like Jesse spinning people out. Couldn't under they caution. drop them to can in east or west? I Put mean, them in the Arca they series. They only got like 18 cars running. Yeah. I mean, Ty Gibbs, honestly, was never the same after that. <laughs> I mean, he went out there like a wrecking ball, but. <laughs> I mean, That's that was, why I think Ty is the perfect replacement for then when they had Kyle. That, they had that wreck and all where the leaders wrecked and Ty Gibbs was one of the leaders and Fox's booth is like, oh, the leaders are crashing. And Fox goes, oh, this is a great time to show a replay of that restart where nothing really happened. So Fox is showing an uneventful restart while the announcers scream, the leaders are wrecking. And we see, and then like, there, and the announcers are like, oh, wait, uh, 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 Trevor Bain and, 
Jamie Mack, at least he's a professional. He grabs it real quick. He's like, oh, here's that restart restart here. Yep, you see, they go. Yep, and then we're going to show you. Then it was like five minutes, and they never even showed a replay of what happened to the re- leaders wrecking. Do you think box is a part of the great resignation? Because the <laughs> more you do things over and over, the better you should be getting, right? But this season, it seems they're getting worse and worse. Like, the cameras are not even on what the guy in the booth is talking about. And it's starting to happen more and more often. Yeah, I don't remember noticing it before. So if it did happen previously, I don't necessarily remember noticing it, to be honest with you. But it's it's pretty bad. Like, it's almost like they don't care whatsoever. I think you would notice it, though, even in prior seasons, if you're like, hold it, the audio isn't matching the video. Well, here's my theory. Fox's coverage has been so bad this year. I think they're not even going to bid on it when it's up. No, my theory is because their coverage has been so bad, that's why we've had all these sold-out crowds. Might be true. I mean, this weekend at Worldwide Technology Raceway, that's God, that's a mouthful. This weekend, sold-out crowd yet again. That's two weeks in a row. I mean, we're just knocking them out. Sold out, sold out, sold out. It's good to see that the fans are coming back. The beginning of the race yesterday when they dropped their green flag, they shot over the crowds, that reminded me straight out of something straight out of Days of Thunder. It was like sold out 1990s crowd. Yeah, 90s, early 2000s. That was seemed to be the golden era. Well, that's when they made Days of Thunder. So, you know, you're right. It, was it just, looked like the Days of Thunder crowd. It's just cool to see it, man. And I think the racing we've had this year as a product is also a reason why we're seeing sold out crowds. I mean, you know, for basically we were closed for two years, but we've got good racing. So let's rate the new car one to 10. Where would you put it at? We're going eight. I'm right there with you. I think it needs some work. I think this, this was a, do you think they've made improvements since Martinsville and Richmond and Phoenix that we don't know about? I think yes and no. Yes. Or we're just getting better with the car. I think the teams are learning the cars more. I think they've made improvements. The teams have, I don't think you've seen a big change necessarily. I think Martinsville was unique because of the temperature change. It was so cold at Martinsville. I think it just, that ruined the racing on top of the car. I think we should have seen a half decent race at Martinsville, but because of the cold weather, we lost that shot too. So I think that played a factor into Martinsville, but I do think we've improved since I think they improved over Phoenix to Richmond. It got a little better and Richmond to here. It got a lot better. So I think there's a lot of room to grow. I think we have a long ways to go before it's right, but we had 15 years or so with the last car. We're going to need time with this car, too. Well, I would almost bet, and you know, I'm s- pure speculation, it's my opinion, the Goodyear and BBS have probably improved, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, Goodyear, obviously, we have a tire problem right now. It's just the cars, these cars run so good on low air, air pressures, and I do not want another rule to regulate air pressures. I think if you blow a tire, it's, that's on you. You pick, you pick how far you want to push that line. Yeah. I don't want NASCAR making a rule on it. We have enough rules. But you almost don't want to see them starting from their pit box after a pit stop and the tires get wrinkles in them like they do in yeah, drag you, racing. Because they got like three pounds of pressure on those yeah, you, top fuel dragsters. You can see it now. When these guys yeah. go green flag it racing. It kind of flexes the tire. Exactly. But I don't want to see a rule to change that. No, I think that should be something that's up to the crew chief. Yeah. I mean, I think do it just Goodyear recommends an air pressure and the crews automatically reduce five from that. And that's what they go with. It's, but that's kind of like a speed limit, you know? Yeah. 55. Run 60. Yeah. 65. It's whatever the police will let you do. And But also... The racing this year has been good, so I think that has attracted the crowds. I mean, you've had the tire. Which the tires are a storyline that draws people in. The lug nuts are a storyline that draws people in. The racing's a storyline that draws people in. Ross Chastain this weekend, 
Dude, <laughs> he is a storyline. He gave us plenty to write about. Oh, he's the one that puts smiles on my face for most of the second half. I'm so, gonna... if you don't know, Ross Chastain drives the number one car. At the end of the race, he got out of the car, said everything that happened is 100% my fault. I don't deserve to drive this car. Trackhouse deserves better than me. I Dude, drove he over was my head all that day. Car like a Russian retreating from the Ukrainians in a tank, freaking out. Ross Chastain goes in, punts Denny, puts him <laughs> in the wall. I mean, ruins Denny's day. Ross Chastain goes in and takes him like three, four wide, gets into Chase Elliott, puts him in the wall, essentially ruining his day. But you know, Ross brought together Denny Chase and, Chase. and Denny. And they found Ross some mutual did what, ground. Ross did what nobody else could do. <laughs> they found mutual ground. They got to go after <laughs> Ross at the exact same oh, time. They tag team that sucker, dude. Here's my problem with the whole thing. I think it was awesome. I thought it was awesome too, man. But I do not like what Ross did after. I mean, yeah, you can own it. I'm good with that. But Ross has been wrecking people since Ross got in a car. Ross was He was an aggressive truck driver. Ross was an aggressive Xfinity driver. And Ross has been an aggressive cup, dri- cup driver. We've talked about it on this show. Other shows have talked about it. Fox has talked about it. I've heard Larry Mack talk about it. I've heard Ross compared to Dell Earnhardt Sr. as an aggressive driver. Own this, it, man. This, this ain't nothing new. Haunt, this is nothing new, though. This is going to haunt him at the playoffs. This is going to haunt him because Denny's the type who will haunt him at every race. Oh, yeah. Denny had nothing to lose yesterday. His race was over. The only purpose he had was to block Ross Chastain, and he did it masterfully. Do you think (laughs) that Chase called his spotter and said, hey, Denny can be my wingman anytime. (laughs) He's my goose. (laughs) Talk to me, goose. Talk to me, goose. (laughs) It was was awesome. That made it exciting, honestly, for me. Like, watching that. Made that. That's where when I was talking earlier, when I gave this race, you know, seven, I was almost at an eight. And I, I thought they were going to come down to a part. full stop while Denny was blocking them up and down the track. Denny, they oh, near put him in the grass. That was so awesome. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. It added a lot of excitement. So, on the topic of Denny Hamlin, at one point, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Bubba Wallace been getting into each other for a few laps, racing pretty hard. Stenhouse decides he's done with it. He punts Bubba, spins him out. Denny Hamlin, obviously, behind all this, sees it. He goes up and hits Stenhouse. I don't like it. Like, who who does Denny think he is, the judge and the jury? Well, we know that he thinks he is, the judge and the jury. So is Denny Hamlin now Batman? He's out seeking vengeance. So I don't like this. He needs to be – when he's on the track racing, he needs to be Denny Hamlin, the race car driver. If somebody runs into Denny Hamlin and Denny Hamlin wants to, like, Ross Chastain him, that's all – I'm all good with that. That's amazing. That's, that's great entertainment. But Ricky gets into Bubba. Bubba drives for Denny. Denny then goes gets into Ricky. I'm not cool with that. That's that, Bubba's vendetta. Isn't that kind of a conflict of interest for Denny? He's driving Joe Gibbs's car. And he's going to get damage. some revenge. And put some damage on the car because he's getting revenge for his, his racing. Team. Yeah, that's a conflict of interest, Denny. Yeah, well, like I said, what is he, some kind of vigilante? You know, well, he, yeah. he can't be Batman. Maybe he thinks he is Batman. Let's ask him if we ever get a press pass again. Are you Batman? I mean, he already wears pajamas, so I guess it wouldn't be that hard to imagine him throwing on some Batman pajamas. Some underoos? <laughs> <laughs> Not even new. <laughs> Maybe they should throw underoos at him at the next victory in <laughs> victory lane. <laughs> well, Joey Logano won the race. Um, I think yeah. it was kind of cool to see Kyle Busch and Joey race clean. You know, both of them are buttholes. Yep. And they don't like each other. And they've been very public about not liking each other for many, many years now. So it was nice to see them two go out and race clean. You know, that just. These guys are the two who show the younger generation how to race dirty 99% of the time. And they just proved against each other that they can do it cleanly. But don't you think there's kind of a detente between the two? Like, this guy can really screw me up, and they're both thinking that. 
Oh, I'm sure. Kyle's thinking, oh, this guy can screw me up. Danny, He'll get revenge. Yeah. And Kyle's, Joey's going, oh, this guy will screw me yeah. up. He'll get revenge. Joey's going, Kyle knows how to wreck me. And uh-huh. Kyle's going, Joey knows how to wreck me. Yeah. And then Kyle's thinking, Joey has no problem driving through me. They both had an opportunity to wreck the other. Oh, yeah. So, But it was good racing. And, yeah, I know. mean, o- overall, I enjoyed the race. I don't like – I'm not a fan of Joey Logano's. I, I just – I'm not. And that's – probably never going to change even if I did meet him. I don't think that his he's not going to change when you meet him. Yeah, I, I just don't see that. <laughs> I don't ever see me and Joey being buds. The lapper. But I still, I didn't vote no on Jeff Gluck's poll because I did, you know, think it was a good race. So, next week we are going to Sonoma. Mm. If I was going to book a hotel and head on out to the Sonoma, California... Jamie, where would I not want to book that hotel at? Well, I can tell you, Brad, I had to hunt far and wide to find crappy hotels. This is a rich man's area, or rich person's. Shouldn't say rich man's. It's the only high dollar Motel 6 in town. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I saw some hotels. 380 that, a night for the Motel 6. In the pictures, I was like, oh, this is going to be a 2 out of 5. And I'd read the reviews, and they're like 4.8 out of 5. And it is visually from the pictures looks like a Wyndham, <laughs> but it's not, it's like its own brand. And I read the reviews and I'm like, holy crap, this place looks like a dump, but these people are like great people. Rooms were clean and updated, nice TV, great yeah. internet. So you think Brian France is running Wyndham? He might be. That would explain all these reviews. It could be. Him and Dr. Black. Yeah. <laughs> Good conspiracy. So I did find some crappy ones. And, of course, they're the brands we always talk about. Window. I went to the old, I, I went to my hotel habit. <laughs> so Crystal Sequidio. Do you think that's <laughs> correct? Sequido. Squiddy. Squidio. Squidio. Motel 6 in Santa Rosa. Which I mapped. It's like five, six miles from Sonoma. It's real close. Decent sized town. She wrote this two weeks ago. And I'm just going to go with Crystal because, I don't know, the Squid Games? Crystal Squido. Squid Game? Squido. 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 So she gave it one out of five on Google and she said the most horrible experience. I called ahead to book directly through Motel 6. I stated we would be arriving at around 4 a.m. or so because this was last minute. A very dear family friend was dying of terminal brain cancer, and hospice gave him hours to a couple days at the most. We arrived, tried to check in, and then, I don't know who she's talking about, the lady at the desk, she refused at first saying we were not allowed to check in at that time, and stated the booking agents didn't know the rules of all the individual Motel 6 locations. You would think being a part of a chain, you would have to uphold the rules of Motel 6, don't, wouldn't you think? I would think so. Then she stated, if we want to check in, she wouldn't take cash-only card. I, I'm What's confused. That? I think... What is a cash-only I mean, card? This is what I'm thinking. How can it be cash-only if they take it? card? my opinion, you got a friend that's going to die in a mere hours, right? She yeah. wrote this while they were probably sat her ass in the lobby. She was pissed. Oh, yeah. She was just befuddled. And I'm, I'm with you, Crystal. I mean, this is bullshit. Well, a very dear family friend was dying of terminal brain cancer. I'm, I hate that. I really it, do. Uh, and, you know. But it, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with the review. Well, the, no. The hotel because, didn't give him brain cancer. No, but. They tried to give like her a room. They were rude. No, they. she doesn't have a Went to get the card, and she asked for IDs of all people. Okay, well, you got to have ID to vote, so you probably need ID to check into a hotel. Not for all people. They didn't ask for yours when we were in Charlotte. <laughs> hey, what that? give me that guy's ID. <laughs> well, maybe they were shady. I don't know what her crew looked like. But it says here, the booking told us this was required as well. When I raised the question of booking and the hotel being on the same page about that rule, she lost it. Well, she didn't even know it to begin with. How can you this, lose something you didn't have? This woman is unstable. St- 
stayed. She was doing. <laughs> See, I think she meant this, said she was this doing woman us a favor. Is unstable. I'm sorry, States. I'm paying full price for services. I then plead that we just need our room. We were tired and wanted a moment of rest before our visit. She mocked us by putting her hand to her head, <laughs> stating we wouldn't be getting any rest. She told my sister to go to the gym. <laughs> what? And then proceeded to stick her tongue out while I was on the phone trying to resolve the situation. Oh, and Customer called the, service, baby. And called the police. We need to hire this woman. While I was on the phone. On top of the fact my mother is diabetic See, and but, missed med medication. But what's that have to do with it the review? It doesn't. That's, because if your mother's I'm diabetic, sorry. you or your mother should know when it's time to take your medication. That's not the hotel's fault. I'm sorry. Like, I feel, I feel it you. was daylight and we still had no room <laughs> in dealing with the police. In the time she took from us, I received a text message stating our friend had passed. She stole the last time we would ever see. No, here. they were want, they were going to go to their room and take a nap. So or touch either this way. person again. Well, but she arrived at 4 a.m. Now the sun's up. Aren't we at like 8 a.m.? He was gone. She knew that was why we were there and mocked us. A six-hour drive. The woman is a lunatic in very sad and traumatic situation. I will never forget. But if she stated this from the beginning, this lady knew. She's claiming yeah. she stated it from the beginning. No doubt. But here's the thing. If I got an open room and you're paying full price for a full night, Hell yeah, I'm going to give it to you for three or four hours. That's awesome. Money for nothing. Yeah, but like she said, they they were going to check in and go get some rest before they headed over to see their terminal brain cancer ill friend. But we don't know if it was a 30-minute nap or a four-hour nap. Exactly, but it would have been it would have no, it would have probably been the same amount of time that it took them to get checked in. So either way, she was going to miss the death of her friend. Which is something that just sounds odd anyway. Like, hurry up, hurry up, we gotta go, he's gonna die. But this lady at the desk is sticking her tongue out at her and... I, like I said, I hate... <laughs> There's I hate something that, going on here. I hate that they lost a family friend to brain cancer. I hate that her mother's a diabetic. I also hate that her mother forgot to take her medicine. Those have nothing to do with the review. That's all I'm saying. But this lady I'm going called the police. Review based only. Her review doesn't give me confidence in what she's saying. Nowhere, it doesn't give you confidence in the employee of the hotel. Okay, I could care less. It's kind of like the Jerry Mayfield story. Yeah, okay. I could care no. less, though. <laughs> I'm not going to stay with the hotel or the concierge. I'm not staying with her or him. I'm going to my own room. So this lady, nowhere in here does she talk about the room. I don't think they ever made it to the room, actually. No, it doesn't sound like it. But now, she never says she did or didn't, so she... She reviewed a person. She never even reviewed the room. I can tell you my problem with this story. If I have a dying friend or a relative and I live six hours away and I'm getting a hotel room, I live six hours away, right? I'm going straight to see them. Right. Or you could, let's say you get off work from five, shoot home, pick up your friend or spouse riding with you, or obviously her sister was sent to the gym for some reason. <laughs> So, pick up your sister after work. You should be able to get there by 11 to midnight, correct? Yeah. It's six hours away. It's not 12. It's not 20 hours. And your sister's going to sleep because she's tired from working out at the gym. It sounds like some poor ass planning here. <laughs> yep. And Piss. then they ran into an asshole working P -P -P. at the desk. Piss poor planning. Yep. And then an asshole working the desk. Okay, so this her review could have said the Motel 6 in Santa Rosa... Has an asshole working at the desk. She's a bitch. That's it. I mean, you're done. Yeah. You just knocked that out. She should have got her name. So we twenty knew words or less. If we accidentally went yeah, to where's this lady's six, name at? Usually we get names here. Then we would know not to give her our credit card. See, here we are being very judgmental of Crystal Squido because she didn't give us the name of the worker. So. If you have a similar situation happen to you, make sure to get the lady's name. Slap their or, name on there so the or company, guy. Motel 6, knows who to fire. Exactly. This I, is your review. Yeah, I mean, I, there's probably like three or four people that work at this 
Motel 6 and Santa Rosa. So now they have to figure out which one of those three or four is a lunatic. All we know is it's a female that sticks her tongue out and calls the police all the time. My guess is if you have an employee that always calls the police, <laughs> you know, you which know one who it is. she is. Yeah. You know, you know which one Crystal Squido is referring to. Uh-huh. Here. All right, where are we going next? Travel Lodge by Wyndham. Drum roll, Wyndham! Our favorite hotel not to stay at. The one owned by Brian France. Yes. Allegedly. CEO of. In our opinion. Travel Lodge by Wyndham, <laughs> in our opinion. All right, who we got? Should we make up a name? We'll just call him BF. BF? Best friend. <laughs> but I'm not going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But first, <laughs> but first, so, travel lodge. By we got him. is that cherry or sherry? C H E R I. I was gonna let you guess. I go cherry, cherry. I'm going sherry. Sherry, okay. That's I'll probably I'm... change the name. Cherry or sherry is <laughs> either or is okay. The same, it's the same Johnson. This was just a few months ago, five months ago. On Google, sherry cherry Johnson gave it a one out of five. Wasn't that a kiss song? Sherry, I hear you calling. Beth. Oh, was it Beth? <laughs> kiss is way before my time. I still like them, though. Anyway. I've seen them on like three farewell tours. <laughs> I saw one farewell tour, and then I said farewell. <laughs> Sherry, Cherry, Sherry. Sherry said, and she's going to give us flat-out dates. I hope she's more compelling than the last lady. We stayed the night here on December 6, 2021. We were traveling, and it was a one-night stand. I mean, stay. Stay. <laughs> Dyslexia. Sorry, people. When we first got in the room, I went to put our food in the refrigerator. The door completely <laughs> fell off. <laughs> Picked up the phone to call the front desk to let them know the phone was broken. <laughs> It didn't work. Hey, have you ever seen Tommy Boy? Oh. When he when oh, David yeah. Spade opens the door and he's like, what'd you do? <laughs> when he rips it off. They were at a Wyndham, too. I, I, can, <laughs> I can see this lady opening the door and her, cousin, her husband going, what'd you do? <laughs> My husband walked back to the front <laughs> desk and spoke with the couple there. The guy said, yes, I know. I haven't had time to fix it. <laughs> He just didn't give a crap. Whatever. <laughs> Do you know you booked at Travel Lodge by window? <laughs> no offer of a different room or anything. It's supposed we to be were broke. You would think they would have an extra dorm room refrigerator and storage <laughs> somewhere. Jeez. That help with the air conditioner was probably broke too, so. I mean, can't you go to Walmart? <laughs> Keep one in stock so when the door falls off, you can just. Get a hand truck, switch them out, and if you can't fix it, go get another one. What the hell? But he said, I know. I haven't <laughs> had time to fix it. Awesome. <laughs> we were tired from our long day, and I just wanted to get a shower and sleep. When we went to take a shower, we found the tub dirty with dark hairs in the tub, along with a screw. <laughs> I think that was the same guy saying that was his way of saying screw you. <laughs> Don't know where it came from. The soap dish was caked with old dried soap. That is so nasty. Yeah. And the toilet paper holder was falling out of the wall. There was something <laughs> sticky spilled all over the sink counter. <laughs> the room was a complete disaster. I would not suggest <laughs> anyone stay there. I wouldn't either. You know, lady... Cherry, Sherry, Johnson, Miss Johnson. You know, Jimmy Johnson's from California. This is California. Maybe this is his cousin. Could be. First off. She goes to that front she, desk. She's like, my stuff's broken. <laughs> and they said, oh, no. I haven't had time Duh. to fix it. This is Travel Lodge, Cherry, Sherry. Go to that front desk. You, you no if it says Wyndham <laughs> after what? They own like. 10 different brands. If it says Wyndham after a brand, <laughs> skip it. It's broke. Just, it's, it's broke. And My phone's broke. Duh. There'll be sticky spilled all over the place. Whatever sticky oh, is. Oh. I don't know that. I, oh. I mean, just so nonchalant, too. She's not even mad about it. Yeah, I know. He's like, 
I know. I tried to call you to tell you my fridge broke. But Did you see my screw in the tub? <laughs> the phone was sc- broke. That screw was supposed yeah. to fix the refrigerator. <laughs> Damn it. I wondered where I put it. Oh, man. I love it. So where are we going next? This is a shocker. It's Holiday Inn by Express. I don't think we've ever reviewed one. No. And this I don't is, know that we've ever had a Holiday This is Inn. Jerry Forty. <laughs> I think... <laughs> That's his legit. He even last spelled name. it wrong. He's from he's from C A one fifth. Jury. No, that's the one out of I was trying to save paper. <laughs> so I bunched it together. He's from Cal Oh, I got heartburn from laughing. He's from Jerry Ford, he's from California. He gave it a one out of five. And he says he did first thing he says is no, I don't recommend the property. So he's clear about that. Jerry says, we were staying at this location so we could see our son graduate and not have to drive all the way back to Lincoln, California. I'm so, I'm oh, we know where college. Jerry's from. Assuming that's graduate college, right? I don't know. Yeah. When we arrived, the clerk was polite but put us in a room that was horrible. The room was so small, we had no place to put our suitcases, really? Yeah. That's pretty freaking tiny. Well, we stayed in a hotel in um, Mexico, <laughs> Los Angeles one time, and and Anaheim, and they are much smaller than what you would get here. So yeah. Wow. Just less square footage over there. The room was on the first floor, which was right next to the back entrance <laughs> and exit, which was used by tenants all the time day by tenants. Well, no, he said B. Yeah, he said B, but I'm thinking he meant by. In your opinion. In my opinion. Because we're just reading what he says. True. So. Allegedly, he can He is by. culpable in what he wrote. We're not. We used to be tenants all, what, you did, <laughs> all, all the time and late into the morning, not allowing us to get sleep. The room was also next to the restroom that was used. I think by what seemed to be homeless <laughs> and others. The smell was unbearable and came into the room. Oh, oh my man. goodness. So it was a communal <laughs> restroom? Yeah, for all the homeless people. And yeah. I don't, you know, if you haven't been to California, that is a mecca for homeless people. That in Miami. And, and if, it's, it's got to be homeless, no offense. No. Keep listening. Yeah. Because if I was homeless, I'd, listen. I'd move to Miami or. <laughs> Los Angeles, too. The weather's great. Yeah, I'd did. probably go to San Diego. I'd definitely listen to our podcast. Though. Yeah, I would. We should be the number one podcast amongst homeless people. Mm-hmm. I missed two weeks in a row now we've discussed homelessness. Yeah. The breakfast next morning was very limited, as most things were already gone. That's because them homeless people are hungry. And that's what he says next. And again, it seemed the homeless or steady ten- seedy, seedy. seedy tenants were consuming the food and one was really disturbing. What, the food or the seedy tenant or homeless person? See, in Georgia, when we did those reviews before the Atlanta race, they didn't refer to them as seedy tenants. They referred to them as crackheads. Do you think that's a I'm thinking crackhead. Term? Yeah, I'm thinking seedy tenant is also you can, crackhead. Okay. That's a southern crackhead. Okay. Seedy. Well, I live in the country. We don't have crackheads. They're meth heads. Okay, well, that's same C- thing. CD would be a crackhead meth head. And what we've learned from these hotel reviews, I think it's the same crack pipe you smoke meth yeah. in. It's interchangeable. Wow. Yeah, we're learning all this. We're learning. Do you think maybe we should do glass pipes for merch for some of our <laughs> homeless listeners? Put race car backwards on race, it. Race car backwards <laughs> on crack pipes. Yeah. For the homeless. I'd like to make some money from this. <laughs> don't, it's, but they're homeless, so they don't we, have any money, so we're just giving them away at that point. So Should we incorporate as a 501c nonprofit since we're not making any money? I think we should do temporary tattoos for the homeless. Race car spelled backwards, and backwards. that's temporary tattoos. Yeah. I went to turn the TV, and this is still in the breakfast room, to watch morning news in the eating area, and a small male Asian <laughs> man came out of the kitchen <laughs> And started yelling at me to not touch the remote and contact him if I needed to use the TV. He was really brash, and I handed him the remote, and we kept to ourselves to not aggravate him more. So we got we have hillbillies 
in Tennessee jumping out of holes in the floor. And here we have Asians jumping out of the kitchen area. Should Denny send a video in, about this? In California. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> we had reserved two more nights, but the client decided to leave after the first night. <laughs> well, I'm not saying and anywhere drive the Asian home man jumps out. <laughs> due to the circumstances we encountered. We had stayed in the Staybridge Hotel for over two months while our new home was being built and enjoyed it. But this experience in Santa Rosa, and he just stopped. <laughs> well, first off, sir, you should be reviewing the Stay Bridge under the Stay Bridge, not under the Holiday Inn Express. So I'm assuming you can he, take you can take that Stay Bridge crap on over to the Stay Bridge review. Is page. that is Stay Bridge by Wyndham? I don't I, know. No, it's a Hilton. Is it? I don't know. I'm pretty huh. sure it is. So, so is this guy getting uh, rewards points from Wyndham? Oh, God, you're really effed up. If you yeah. got the, the Wyndham you... rewards card. <laughs> Where did you get your crack fight? It's a prepaid I card. My, I ordered my crack fight with my Wyndham <laughs> points. Oh, I'm, I got to check. You guys. can get free breakfast at any Wyndham if you're homeless with your Wyndham points and use their bathroom. I'm pretty sure a Staybridge is a Hilton. But why? Well, I you... just Googled Staybridge by Wyndham, and you're right. It's a Hilton. Oh, but, it's an IHG brand. But why would you put that in your Hilton review? I mean, your Holiday Inn review. I guess they were comparing it as being awesome right. compared to. But this is a long drive from home, isn't that? They're from Lincoln. Isn't. How can you compare a crappy hotel? In Sonoma or okay. Santa Rosa with a hotel down in Lincoln. I think I missed something here because I was thinking that he was saying the Asian man jumped out of the kitchen in his room. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miyagi? <laughs> Miyagi so you're sorry. talking about the hotel kitchen. like Oh, you like the crappy little lunch the communal, breakfast room. Communal yeah, area. probably the lobby yeah. where they give you a I was thinking batter. that that little mm. bitty hotel room. Had a kitchenette in it, and an Asian man jumped out. <laughs> like the hillbilly well, did in West Virginia, or in Tennessee that time. Well, let's go with you, then. I like that Mine's better. funnier. An Asian man jumping out of the kitchenette. What, I mean, what is that? Like a dorm, <laughs> when he jump out of the refrigerator, the door goes falling off, and an Asian man runs out. <laughs> Does he live in the, can the little He might dorm live in the refrigerator. refrigerator? Maybe he didn't even. It's the even, Dr. Pepper guy. Maybe he didn't work there. He was homeless getting food. The homeless Asian man yeah, comes out and says, free, You deserve a Dr. Pepper. Getting a free English muffin. Oh. Because he says he thinks the homeless are snatching that stuff. Yeah, he didn't even get his free breakfast because no. the homeless Asian guy took it all. All right, where uh, are we going? Boy, my Budge, stomach, the budget in? My lungs hurt from laughing on the last <laughs> one there. Budget in, and it's Edgar Ruiz, a name I can say. Oh, I thought it said runs. Oh, uh, well, we could put it. He's a small guy, <laughs> Edgar Runtz. And these are all current, guys, so yeah. stay away from these. This was just nine months ago, and he gave it a one out of five. The good old budget in. The good old Google one Which, fifth. I think next week I should do a little segment on the history of the budget in. I didn't know it was a chain, but I'm looking back at the previous reviews. There's quite a lot of them. You think we could interview Brian France about the budget in you think he knows that too do you think we could find him on twitter or find his email address do you think he still has a nascar address yeah i doubt it you think he's like completely punted out of nascar i doubt it he's just collecting money he's, isn't so, he? he's somewhere well he's descended from the masters so yeah he's he's well he's taken collecting care of. some cash he's yeah, got a billion he's well taken there. care of i'm sure but you know his ex-wife. I wonder how much she got. Anyway, that's that's for more after we hear the Dale Jr. download this week. Yeah, part two more next week. And we're plugging Dale Jr. Yeah, cause, for free. And we like him. Yeah, he's our friend. So, well, <laughs> not literally. But he don't know it. We're buddies. <laughs> if we could just get some high ridge vodka over here and. Yeah. Central South Atlanta. Get some of that couch racing gear too. Yeah. And we're we're talking about free merch, guys. Don't send us a link to buy it on your store. At this point, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it. Okay. I'm gonna get a couch racing hat. All right. Edgar back says, to the budget in with Edgar Runtz. 
Edgar says, I'm not picky at all, but this place has been the worst, dirtiest place I've ever stayed at. And I travel often. This place was dirty, had holes on both sides of the bathroom door. Oh, we had that. Oh, yeah. That's at a, the Beach Bar Inn. Yeah. We know who owns this. Oh, yeah. Same guy that owns the Beachfront Hotel. Oh, definitely. In look Daytona. Look, look what he says next. I know. Had a punch hole. Through the shower. <laughs> and it's missing the mirror. Had only one yellow stained <laughs> towel. Yeah. Yep. We've been here. Oh, definitely. And the amount of tweakers. Oh, yeah. We had a tweaker out our window. Sleeping under our window. Yeah. That's right. Outside the parking lot was way more than expected at a regular hotel. So he's basically calling this crackhead hotel. No, tweakers were oh, well, CD was a term for is tweakers. Tweakers, yeah, tweakers That's is meth, meth heads. heads. Oh, okay. That's a. Um, so this is the a, meth hotel. A California meth heads, a tweaker. Where a Georgia meth heads, a meth head. Okay. No reason to complicate it. The room was also missing the smoke detector, and the Ugh. TV was on when I went in, and I could not turn it off. <laughs> That's why it was on. It says free breakfast on the site, but once there is, it says no breakfast. <laughs> so once you get in, it says no, which is the only reason I picked this place for others to save on breakfast with a family of four. I was literally up all night watching my car <laughs> and making sure no one opened the room. I grew up in Compton, California, and I have to say this is beyond ghetto. <laughs> well, he would know in Compton, wouldn't he? Straight out of Compton. So he probably knows tweakers in Compton. Mm. Is that what they call tw meth heads in Compton? Tweakers? I don't know. I don't think I've ever been to Compton. We're going to have to figure out what tweakers Does the I-10 go over Compton? I thought tweaker was somebody who was active on Twitter. I once, on a business trip in Vegas, you skipped on that one. <laughs> yeah. Went and saw some family friends over in L.A. and We rented a car and drove over the mountains from I-10 <coughs> to Santa Monica. And if... Anyone is from Los Angeles. I think we might have driven over Compton. Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. We went through Compton when I was out there. Took a wrong turn? Went through, I, got, I went through Compton, Inglewood. All the, all the like Dr. Dre and NWA songs, I tried to hit all those. Snoop Dogg, all those streets and stuff. I want to hit all those areas. What's, just, what's crazy, though, is like you're in like multi-billion dollar houses you cross the street and you're in five hundred thousand dollar rundown shacks because even the rundown shacks in LA i wonder are why they don't move to atlanta half a million by one heck of a house here i mean uh, nice i don't know you go down my way half a million to get you a racquetball court in the basement it takes me an hour to drive through atlanta and i can't get cell phone service well, that's hardly just three in atlanta. miles uh, exactly. <laughs> so there's no reason for anybody else to keep moving to Atlanta. All right. Traffic's you heard it here. <laughs> Brad is not a part of the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Stay right. away. That's right. Traffic's already bad enough. We don't need we don't need to make it any worse. I just think more people need to go virtual. I wish my job would go virtual. That'll never happen. All right. So we're going to Sonoma. Sonoma is a two-and-a-half-mile, 12-turn road course. It is asphalt. It has 47,000 seats, but with hospitality, infilled seating areas, 10 areas, there's about 102,000 total seats. It is owned by our good buddy Marcus Smith. He owns that one, too? Yep, SMI. Huh. And first race was 1968. I so, was a wee little sperm. <laughs> 68? Yeah. What year were you born? 68. So you might have been... I may have been a... Well, you, you I might, was an egg you might have been sperm. You might have been born by the time the first race happened. Or was I... It was pre-birth or post-birth. One of the two. I had a window. My mother's had plastic <laughs> over her belly button. You had a window. <laughs> it was a womb with a view. <laughs> Not by Wyndham. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I had a window. <laughs> I saw it all. I watched that race through the womb. <laughs> Old mom put a window in so I could watch the race. Well, I was born in December, so it probably was a womb with a view. So going into road course racing at Sonoma, fantasy picks, fantasy stats. So our statisticals for Sonoma, Martin Truex Jr. has got three wins here, six top tens. 
Kyle Busch has two wins here with eight top tens. Kyle Larson's got a win here and a couple top tens. He's got three poles here. Chase Elliott has no wins here yet and three top tens. Kurt Busch has a win here. I think Kurt had the most races here too, but he has 11 top tens and one pole. And then A.J. Allmendinger has two top tens, and he is racing this weekend, and he has one pole here as well. So, for me, my picks for the weekend, A.J. Allmendinger, Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe, because Briscoe runs pretty strong at Rovals and Road Courses. And then I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Hmm, that's an interesting pick. Well, I, I looked back at previous races, and – if I was going to pick a dark horse, somebody might not be your main pick. Ricky had decent stats. I mean, he, he seems to find his way to the front more more often than not. So, that's who I got. Who you got, Jamie? Martin Truex Jr. is going to win Sonoma. And retire. It'll be his middle finger to Joe Gibbs. And it'll be his swan song before he goes to Junior Motorsports next year. Part-time. Part-time. With Kyle running full-time. Well, you know, Junior could field a <laughs> car without getting a charter. Just have to race in. Yeah. All right, Truex Junior. And after Truex, I'm going with Harvick. All right. That's his home state. And after Harvick, I am going with Awesome Bill from Dawsonville's Little Boy. Oh. He's a damn good road racer, dude. He is. That's why I didn't Actually, he should have been my number one. Yeah. But he we know he'll lose because he's even in my top four. And then after that, I'm going with Cody Ware. You think he's going to be the only one left? But, you know, I did something I have never done with Dude, where Rick Cody, Ware Racing. I didn't even hear him mention Cody Ware's name. I think he finished. No, he was he went out at lap 166. Oh, or he only, Cody. yeah. Cody. Cody. Yeah, it looks like he had a power issue. I went to Rick Ware Racing's website. And that made you pick Cody this week? Do you know they field cars in almost every series? Yeah, that's where Rick makes his money at. That's how you can afford Cody tearing up. I didn't know that. I mean, they got IndyCar or N N T, whatever you want to call it. They got IMSA team. Well, the fact that Cody wears not a headline is a headline in itself. Because it is. He is. He stepped it up this year. Well, yeah. really, the, the last five races or yeah, so. Yeah, it's he's been the it last up. half of the first quarter. Yeah, the last well, half of the math, first. Half. The last it? half of the first half. Or to you, it's English. Yeah, you're messing my English up, man. <laughs> Well, got, a half of a quarter is what? You got one-fifth of Google. Twelve and on. a half? <laughs> <laughs> what pronoun do you use for that? Well, I don't know. I don't know what a pronoun is. All right, so you got... I, me. You got. You have Truex, Harvick, Elliot, Cody. I've got AJ, Larson, Briscoe, and Stenhouse Jr. I Why think, did you go with Stenhouse? You like Kroger? No, I told you. I just... I was trying to think outside the box. I think you like Kroger. I think it's because when I was getting my picks together, I had talked about Denny Reck and Stenhouse earlier in the notes, and it was just Stenhouse is on my brain. But I did look at the stats, and he if you need a low-budget pick, he's a good low-budget pick. Has he ever won a road course? Well, he's barely won a race, but... Well, they're all super speedways, yeah. which is a free-for-all. Exactly. So is a road course here lately. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's all I got this week, guys. I like yeah. Kroger. Well, that sounded like Forrest Gump, didn't it? I like, I like Kroger. me some Kroger. I like, I Kroger. like Kroger. I like Kroger. They don't even endorse race car spelled backwards. Yeah, none of these brands we've mentioned today, Kroger, Couch Racer, Shop.com, or the Dell Junior Download are sponsors of the show. We just, Should we? We just like them, so that's that. Should we get a marketing team and start nah. trying to sell advertisements? Personally, I don't ever want to have to say something nice about somebody because they sponsor us. So. Oh, I'm willing to whore out myself and say something nice to a sponsor. Oh, I'm not saying say I'd say something nice to a sponsor, but I don't want to be on the show and say I can't say something negative about X, Y, Z. Oh, you're not willing to sell out your integrity? Yeah. And our 501c nonprofit we got going right here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
We're like the Red Cross of racing. <laughs> we don't make squats. <laughs> All right. Well, that note, we do appreciate everybody that listens, everybody that follows us. You know, check us out on Spotify. Rate us. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Car Backwards. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple. Leave us a review. And check out our website. It's racecarbackwards.com. Otherwise, have a great week. We appreciate everything. Bye. Thanks for listening to Race Car Spelled Backwards.